All right, everyone. Welcome to the first segment of the thermodynamics class. So in this particular segment, I will focus on introducing the thermodynamics, what exactly it is, and why you should study it. Okay. Um, the first thing I wanna, from the first moment on, I wanna let you know is this is actually energy. This course could have been called an energy. As an example, in the department that I teach, we have multiple uh, technical electives called renewable energy, but we don't have an energy course. Well, actually we do. The name is thermodynamics, okay? I'll talk a lot about it, but this is for now, it's gonna do it, okay? But then the question comes, well, why don't we go ahead and call it energy to begin with, right? Why are we using a terminology which is kind of like, I never heard of it, right? Thermodynamics, okay? I'll give you two options and we'll decide together. First, as it's related to energy, this is option A, it's related to energy, well, there was a professor who was uh, saying that, hey, I work with calories, right? Energy, unit of energy will work We'll talk through this, but this what's calories and all. So then, you know, he shared with somebody else and that somebody else said that, oh, are you working for Weight Watchers, right? Calories and all. So the professor said that I'm going to come up with a name that you will never confuse with that again, okay? And he came up with thermodynamics. That's option A. Okay, sorry for being a little silly. But the real reason why we call this is actually it's historical, okay? Um, you know, you, you know, like this, this sounds like a thermal, right? Therme, you know, it actually means heat, okay? And the second word, dynamics, is, is related to power. You kind of know it, right? And earlier efforts of thermodynamics was focusing on converting heat to power. And you may be saying, okay, heat to power? That is a little weird. Well, wait a second. We are changing, converting heat to mechanical uh, power or mechanical and actually, that's how your internal combustion engines work, okay? We still use it today, right? So that's the reason why we call this thermodynamics. Okay, then the next thing I want to talk about quickly is why are you studying this? Well, I'll give you option A, just like the previous uh, thing. Well, you have an advisor. The advisor said that if you want a piece of paper called diploma, you've got to take my course, okay? That's option A, okay? And if it sounds silly that, you know, you're working for a piece of paper called diploma, well, think about this. You work entire your life for a piece of paper called money. So it's not that, uh, you know, off. Um, but anyways, that was a silly moment as well. The next thing is, why are we studying it? Well, energy is everywhere, okay? You know this, uh, you know, this, the students now, uh, you know, listening to me, their backgrounds is from uh, civil engineering, I have chemical engineering, and I looked at my class, the, the one I'm teaching now, um, I even have computer science uh, background student who is gonna get a degree over there and taking my course, okay? So energy is everywhere, you encounter these every day, okay? And I'll give you anecdotal examples to get us motivated a little bit. Um, I'll ask a question, obviously this is a one way uh, street, but um, how many times do you think your heart beats every day? Okay, the answer is 100,000. So every day, around obviously, um, you get 100,000 beats. So what happens is this heart pumps blood. Blood transports nutrients and energy to the cells and cells convert this energy, let's say that I'm running, what happens is I generate heat, right, as an output of the energy conversion. So what happens is we reject the heat from our body. It's called sweating, right? So you can see we, we are used to these uh, a lot, okay? Now I'll give you another example. Again, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I'm going to focus to that end. Is Well, we have the uh, internal combustion engine, right? Actually, we have a technical elective on that one. It's called internal combustion engine, literally. Um, or let's, let's take electric vehicles, um, and I'm sure you are talk, thinking of a company, right? I'm sure it's called Tesla, right? Or let's talk about a, a hybrid vehicle, right? So, uh, vehicle. And the hybrid vehicle, I'm sure it's, I don't know, people usually think about Prius, right? So I'll give you an example for this so we can motivate ourselves a little bit. So the hybrid uh, vehicle. And as you know, um, you know, let's say that a hybrid vehicle gets 60 mpg. Sorry that I'm using the units that we use in the US for those of you who are you know, watching this from overseas. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to stick to this. So 60 mpg, okay? Um, and let's think for a little bit, how does this achieve? So, I, uh, okay? And we will talk about these, but the, 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 the capacity of the battery within uh, a Prius is 4.4 kilowatt hour, okay? So it only uses, actually, in order to save, uh, you know, this nickel metal hydride battery can typically use 80% to 40% to extend its life, right? So when I look at this particular one, 
then it becomes like what? 40% uh, of 4.4 is what I use. 40% of 4 of 4 is 1.67, uh, right? 1.67 kilowatt hours. That's all I have. That is the usable energy within a cycle. If it goes from 80% to 40%, it typically doesn't, by the way. Okay. Um, okay, so how much of a gasoline does this uh, correspond to? Okay, let's give an example to that. Okay, so for that I need a conversion. Okay, and the conversion is right here. One gallon and the energy contained in a one gallon of regular gas is 33.7 kilowatt hours. Okay, there are different sources for it, but I go with the US government's EPA uh, website. Okay, um, um, so this is the energy content. So I'm looking at this. Um, looking at here so if I convert this you can see this is like a joke right you know the content of the battery is only 1.76 kilowatt hours right so if I convert this to this like equivalent of a gallon so you can see this is like almost like 20 times right this is uh, you know like 20 times just give or take as this so that means that the content of the previous battery is 0 0.05 gallons okay and for uh, you know international, let's convert this to yeah, so this is 3.8 uh, times 0. 0.4, let's say 200 milli milliliters. Okay, I don't have to be accurate, exact accurate here because my point stays the same. Okay, so you can see, and a typical car uh, with the same size, let's say it gets 30 mpg. So this car gets 60 mpg, like double of it, right? But the content of the, the additional 30 mpg comes from just it's kind of weird, right? You know. So how does it obtain this? How does it obtain? Well, we'll talk about these things down the road, okay? I just want to motivate you at this point so you don't drop my course. That's all I'm after, okay? Well, talking about electric and all, obviously we have to talk about Tesla, right? So the Tesla is, you know, using lithium-ion battery. Um, it's more expensive, um, but it can use more of the, it doesn't have to go from 40 to 80%. It's still recommended not to exceed, you know, like you don't want to charge it 100% every day, but um, still. Um, and let, let me um, look at the, uh, you know, I looked at their website and the cheapest uh, Model 3, this much of battery in it, okay? So, okay, let's go back here. So, did you see what I wrote here? Where is it here, actually? Did you see what I wrote here? Okay, so if I convert this to this, what I become is, I mean, again, I'm just making a general point over here. So, the energy content of a Tesla is what I have is 1.5 gallons of regular gas. Okay. But how does it achieve? How does uh, the, the, the range? I looked at it. It says 260, but I don't have to go with it. Let's say 250, give or take. Okay. If I convert to the SI, so that's going to be 400 kilometers, right? So it achieves this 400 kilometers for 250 miles with a gallon, one and a half gallons of gas. So do you see how efficient these things are? Okay. Um, and if I uh, convert this, by the way, 1.5 gallon is 5. Point, uh, 5 .6 ish, 5 5.6 ish, 5.7 liters, just to give it inside of it, and you drive 400 kilometers on it, okay? Um, anyways, so if I convert this to here, you can see that my MPG, theoretically, energy will be 166 MPG, okay? That's what the MPG amount goes to. Then I went to the uh, EPA's website, and it says 142 MPG is what it is getting, okay? So I want to make a point in here, how, how efficient it is, number one. Number two, look at the theoretical maximum and what is the actual one. Obviously, this is going to change with conditions, but I'm giving a, you know, a, a example in here. And you can see what is the efficiency of this engine is, okay? Um, you know, technically, what I'm saying here is not 100% right, but it gives an impression of this. So this, this says that right around 85% or whatever, something like that, uh, is the efficiency. Of an electric vehicle okay so and a typical IC engine it operates at like 30 30s okay so you can see how efficient is it all right again I can talk a lot more about it but I have to uh, you know uh, explain new topics but I will talk about this along the course now I'm just ensuring that you don't leave my course okay okay that's enough for IC and uh, cars in general we have power plants right in a power plant we have the heat then we convert the heat to mechanical then mechanical to the electrical that's how you power things okay HVAC system in your house right HVAC very very important right uh, you know here in Florida right now it's very hot and HVAC is running so very very important okay so what it does is uh, 
in the HVAC, it takes the uh, energy from the room and dumps it outside, basically. We'll talk about this, this cycle, about, uh, you know, this refrigeration cycle, okay? The refrigeration and the AC are uh, operates in a similar cycle, okay? We'll talk about these, same thing. Instead of cooling the air, cooling the room, the refrigeration is cooling the inside of a fridge, right? Um, you can think about solar power, right? Wind turbines, solar cells, right? The, what does solar cells do is it takes the sun and it converts it to electrical energy, right? The fuel cells, etc. Okay, so that is uh, the application space that we will cover. Okay. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to give you three things, uh, the laws that we are going to go over in thermodynamics just to get us going. Okay. Um, zero to a law is very similar to Captain Obi's law, okay? So it simply says that the thermometers are legit devices, okay? Again, I'm overly simplifying in here, I'm making a joke, uh, but, you know, so if I have two bodies, one is the temperature is TA, the other one is a TB, and let's say that I put this one with another body, like let's call the TC, and they're in thermal equilibrium with each other, then, you know, you can see over here that TA must be equal to TC. That's how we measure the temperature with thermometers, right? Again, I'm oversimplifying, but remember, um, you know, it's very confusing. I'll have, uh, uh, you know, sessions on this one, but uh, we typically confuse heat with heat transfer, okay? Temperature and heat transfer are confused. And before this law, it was confused, so this is a major breakthrough, okay? We'll come back to that. I don't want to talk a lot about, uh, about it, but I want to give you an uh, overview. The first law, which we will come back to uh, quickly, actually, is simply energy cannot be created or destroyed. And even you know this from physics, right? And energy can change from one form to another. That's no question, right? That's the all, uh, you know, your cars are doing, right? Um, so that's fine. So energy cannot be destroyed or created, right? Again, um, it may sound weird to you, but we'll talk a lot about it, okay? Just hang in, hang in there with me. And I can change the form of the energy, okay? I can dump it to the surrounding system, etc. But I'll have to introduce some terminology, which is coming very soon, okay? Let's look at the second law, okay? This is going to be actually the easiest law ever. It's that second law says that never ever forget first law. Okay, I made that up. So second law says that the energy has a direction. There's a bunch of different, uh, you know, uh, expressions, and we'll talk very in detail, but also uh, the one that I personally like is energy has a quality associated with it, okay? And for instance, if I have a hot cup of coffee, if I leave it on the surrounding, it's going to cool down. It has a direction, and we're going to quantify these in this course as well, okay? Um, I think that's all, though, that's, that's enough for the first session, all right? Thank you for listening.